One of the hardest things about being an indie film music composer is matching our vision to our budget when it comes to our projects. We need to make music that is every bit as good as these huge studio films, but oftentimes with incredibly limited or like literally no resources. And so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you four different budget levels that I'm used to working with and how I get the most out of my music given the resources that I've been given or lack thereof. So let's jump right into it. So for this first level of budget, which is literally no budget at all, my advice to you is use characterful samples. Uh, let me show you a little bit about what I mean by that. Okay, so before I begin, I want to make a disclaimer. When I'm talking about budget, I'm talking about something different than when I get paid. I'm making a distinction between the composer fee, which is the money that I get for doing my services, and the budget, which is the money that they give me to help make the score that I'm making, you know. Sometimes you incur expenses when you're creating a score like hiring live musicians or any number of things, mixing, um, orchestration help, things like that. And so I'm talking specifically about that amount of money. Now, sometimes you get a package deal and that's incredibly common where, you know, here is a huge chunk of money and you need to decide what you get paid out of that and what you spend out of that. Now, that's incredibly hard because... If you're anything like me, you're just going to spend all the money and you don't make any money, but you can't do that. You got to feed your family. And so I like to structure it in my deals where, hey, I need to make this amount of money minimum. Anything on top of that, anything extra that you guys want to do, it's going to cost money out of the production. And typically they're willing to do that. Sometimes they're not, and that's fine. Um, but when I can structure it that way, I really like to structure it that way. So let's assume that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about budget in all of these. So this first one is one where I had zero dollars of budget. I was I was getting paid to do it, but I didn't have any money really to um, spend on creating. It was also incredibly fast turnaround. And so the solution here is always just match your vision with your budget. I didn't have the budget to hire live people to do a bunch of crazy huge things. And so what I decided to do is let's just make it small. Let's use some new samples that I got and let's find some character within that that we can use that really helps make the score, you know, sound more than a non-budget score might sound. So um, Orchestral to a Solo, which I did a video linked below and above and everywhere. Um, about was sort of my solution to this. It was a sample library that I have. And um, there's just a couple things in here that really helped elevate this without having to record stuff live. Um, th these are, this is a great example, this section right here. So you hear that, it's, it's not just basic, like it, it has a performative aspect to it because I'm choosing to use samples that have some of that movement. You know, it's things like these little repetitions, these arpeggios. This stuff is all very live sounding. And and when you layer that, it gives your scores a feeling of being live. And I also just decided, hey, I'm not gonna do a lot on this score. I'm gonna keep it pretty small. And I'm really just gonna stick to like one main library, which was Salu. And then a couple other just little things to fill in the gaps. But for the most part, the entire score is Salu. And keeping it within that realm and using those really characterful samples really helped me make the score sound bigger than it otherwise might have. Because while it's small and it's intimate, it has a lot of character. And so that's the first thing I would say when you're dealing with low budget, try to use characterful samples. Now, I recognize that samples cost money. Obviously, I've spent a lot of time investing. This one actually was sent to me for free by Orchestra Tools, so it didn't cost me money. But not not everyone gets that and I totally understand that and I want to acknowledge that however if you go to places like Spitfire Audio I mean labs is some of the most characterful samples that exist and they're completely free um, orchestral tools does also have a bunch of free stuff um, their project Sam I think has some free stuff a lot of them have free samples and piano book is an amazing resource if you've never heard of that where people upload their own homemade samples and the characterfulness of those, it's just unbelievable. And that really, really, really is what's going to make your no budget score sound special is those special samples. I mean, you can find stuff on piano book that no one's probably put in a film before. I mean, that's how incredibly kind of niche and cool it is. And, and they're all free. So definitely recommend checking that out. So yeah, that was sort of how I was able to do a no budget one. Let's check out one step above that. So these first two budget levels are 
almost basically in the same category. I just didn't want to say that I didn't have any budget for this next film, but I had very, very little. I think I spent $65. So, um, and I'll, and I'll tell you what I spend it on, but it, there's a lot of things here that actually also apply to the no budget category. Um, the main one I'll say, aside from just using characterful samples, which I was talking about, um, which is, there's a great one here from Piano Book, like I was just saying, L listen to this. I mean, that sounds like it was recorded live. It's so incredibly cool. So that's sort of the example, another example of the sort of thing that I'm talking about, and that was a free sample. Now, the other thing is, if you know how to play an instrument, even if you don't really know how to play an instrument, record yourself doing something. That is a great way to save money. And this score in particular, I'm going to show you the, the last cue here. Um, I record all over this score. I recorded myself playing guitar. Um, but this this last cue was sort of, that was the foundation. I know I didn't really have any money, so I was like, okay, I'm going to do a guitar cue. Um, so this is me playing guitar on this score. So yeah, obviously I didn't have to pay me. I was just able to sit down and do it and that saved me money, which was a really awesome way to do it. And it adds a live element to your score, which goes a long way. So even if you're not great at stuff, just grab things, put it in front of a microphone and make some sounds. You know, it goes, it goes a long way doing that. Now, this one also is me being a little bit clever in this score. So what I was able to do was I had a recording session with a string quartet and we were recording for a project and we booked a lot of recording time and I figured we might have some extra time and so I asked the person um, who I was doing the project with if I was like hey if we have some extra time at the end of the session can I record a quick three minute cue of mine for a film um, if we don't have time totally fine but if we do, do you mind? I'll just have sheet music on hand. And he was like, yeah, it's totally fine. I don't care at all. I also asked the performers because I don't want to be disrespectful of them and just assume they'll stay even though we're paying them for a certain time. I, I want them to know that it is, you know, something extra. And I'm really good friends with all these guys and girls. So um, they were willing to stay and we were willing to do it. And we actually were still able to keep them in the time that we did. But so this was free and I recorded a, a string quartet. Um, here's here's some of that. This is obviously this is not mixed um, in this session here, but here's what that sounds like. With the guitar from earlier. So that's already, I mean, that's shaping up to sound like a real thing, and I've spent no money so far. Now, the other thing, and this is the only thing I did spend money on, is I realized towards the end of this cue, I was like, man, we need a solo trumpet. I want it so bad. And I didn't really have money to hire one, so I did something that normally I tell people to avoid, but I went on Fiverr, and I hired a trumpet player for $65 to play a melody that I wrote, and he absolutely crushed it. I'll link him in the bottom of this video, um, but just listen to this. So, you know, 65 bucks out the door and you've got pretty much an entire live queue. And now I recognize that that is contingent upon one, I can play guitar and I got a little lucky with some recording time. But if you're always thinking about those things and thinking about how to maximize on the opportunities that you have, I mean, you can do a lot with very, very little. Um, so let's look at the next level of budget. This is where we start getting into, you know, having a little bit of money to actually spend. Okay, so this next budget level is where things get really exciting for me as a composer because this is when I start getting the amount of money where I can actually dream a little bit and actually take some chances and really try to go above and beyond what I can do with limited resources. And what I was able to do on this film is we had enough money basically for me to get a 30 minute session with a string orchestra and then a couple hours with um, two different soloists. So the way that I tried to kind of maximize that time was I decided for the string orchestra, obviously that's not enough recording time to do like 
the entire score because it's like 17 minutes of music and they say they can do about five minutes sometimes they can do more than that but i didn't want to plan for more than five so what i did is i strategically placed the cues that we're going to have live orchestra in the most impactful important moments in the score so that it felt like you had live orchestra everywhere and then i put the soloists that I was recording. One was a fiddle player, one was a multi-woodwind instrumentalist, plays like ethnic world woodwind instruments. They're Phil Glenn and Ashley Jarmok, respectively. Um, They did an absolutely incredible job. I sprinkled them all throughout the score so that there was always some element of something live and interesting going on and just gave them noticeable things even when there wasn't live orchestra so that your ear is always drawn to something very human and so I just strategically put it throughout the score like that but let me show you an example of a cue that I mean you can really start to see what having just a little bit of money can get you um, here in this in this film so let's check this out so this is probably my favorite cue from the film Um, I'll start a little bit into it but this features really everything. This has Ashley doing woodwinds, it has Phil doing solo fiddle, um, and then the string orchestra. Here's strings. Bansery. to Duke and then for this next bit I had Phil really do a lot with the solo fiddle and it's just so cool especially with the string orchestra that's him shredding Now you see, I mean, it's not full orchestra. Like I've still got sampled brass in there. I've got sampled choir in there. I've got sampled percussion in there. Um, And this is just one example of a cue where there's a lot of live stuff going on. But throughout the film, I mean, sometimes there's literally just one live element. Like where's a good example of that? Here's a a good example right here. Um, This is all sample strings, but it's a solo um, gemshorn played by Ashley. And the cue just, it's it's enough. I'm not missing anything. Again, I'm using characterful samples. The sample stuff's really simple. The whole ear is drawn to the melody, which is done by a live instrument. So you're prioritizing impactful moments, you're prioritizing melodies, you're spending your money in those places. And then the other things can just stay in the box and what you end up with an end result that actually feels pretty much 100% live and really cool. So there's one budget level above this, which is when you really just have everything you need. And um, in the case of this next one, that means full orchestra. So let's dive into that. Okay, so for this one, the production company was like, hey man, we want you to go all out. What do you need basically? And I said, hey, let's do live orchestra. It was a fantasy orchestra thing. Um, And they were like, yep, let's do it. So we booked enough recording time, more than enough recording time for what we needed. And we just went live orchestra on this. And I'm going to play this for you. And I hope that the sense that you get is that this isn't actually monumentally better from the other stuff that you've heard. Obviously, it's all live orchestra. It's really cool. It's fun. But the idea is that no matter the budget level, you want to be able to get that feeling and get there in whatever way that you can. And so I I hope that listening to this, you don't go, oh, that's better than all the other ones. I mean, maybe you think it's better. But I hope that what you do go is you go, hey, that isn't that far above from the last thing and that's not really that far above from the other thing maybe your favorite thing was the thing with no money or maybe it was with the one with like 65 dollars i mean my point is hopefully you aren't letting the money get in the way but you're able to just match your vision to the scope of your resources i have to do that all the time it's so rare that i get to do something like this where it's all live orchestra and just make the best music that you can. And that's the encouragement that I hope you take away from this video. But let's check this out because it's freaking fun.
So yeah, that's cool. But I'm always trying to make everything I do that cool, no matter the amount of resources that I have. And I hope there was a couple helpful tips in those different levels of budget that sort of help you think about the ways that you can elevate your music and make it sound like it, you know, you spent more money than you did and that you stop thinking of, you know, not having money as not being able to be creative or not being able to do what you want to do. I thought that way for a long time and it's taken me years to realize that there's always something you can do and just reach for that thing. It's not always about having this big lush orchestra. Sometimes it's like a stripped down Ennio Morricone style thing or it's a smaller ensemble thing or it's just sticking to some characterful samples or grabbing a guitar and recording yourself. You know, it's things like that. Whatever you can do to instill humanity into your music is actually what matters. So thank you so much for watching. Um, this was fun to make, fun to kind of walk through these recent projects and sort of go over and talk about budget stuff. If you want to talk more seriously about that and more specifically about that, I do have a discord and I'm super candid there. And we talk a lot about budgets and working as a composer and everything else that's always linked below. Go ahead and click on that. Join the discord. It's a super welcoming community. We'd love to hear your music. If you have specific questions, I'd love to answer them. We'll just spend some time getting to know each other and um, hopefully diving into the things that interest you more. So uh, like the video if you liked it. Subscribe. I've got a lot more videos coming and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye.